Hi, everyone. Welcome to day two of Next, the afternoon, that is. My name is Megan O'Keefe. Just to make sure you're in the right place, this is Hybrid 201, Istio in production, day two traffic routing. All right. Welcome. Uh, great. So I'm here today. My name is Megan. Hello. I'm here today to talk to you all about how to manage traffic in production with Istio in 40 minutes. Uh, just a bit about me. I am a developer programs engineer at Google Cloud. Uh, I, my job is to work closely with our engineering and product teams here at Google to make sure that you, the users, have the best experience possible with our technologies. Specifically, I work on Kubernetes and Istio. Uh, in my previous role, I was working uh, as an engineer doing multi-cluster Kubernetes at the edge of the network. So Service Mesh is super excited, exciting for me, and I'm so excited to be here today. And thank you so much to everyone joining here live and on the live stream as well. So raise your hand if you know what Istio is. Phew, OK. Raise your hand if you have installed Istio and used it. Awesome. A little bit fewer hands. Raise your hand if you're running Istio in production. Oh my gosh, this is many more hands than I expected. This is very exciting. <laughs> uh, I am here today to kind of go beyond the hello world of Istio. Uh, there's a lot of intro content out there, and uh, I'm here to throw, show through demos and through concepts how to actually do things with Istio. So let's get right into it. I've divided up this talk into four parts. First, I just want to make sure we're all on the same page about what Istio is and how it works. Because of time reasons, I wish I could cover things like multi-cluster Istio and mesh expansion with VMs. For the purposes of this talk, we are here today to talk about Istio running on one Kubernetes cluster, plain old open source Istio. Uh, the rest of the talk will dive into demos about traffic rules inside of a cluster, so east-west traffic. And then the latter part of the talk will focus on ingress, traffic in, and egress, traffic out. So how does Istio work? You may have heard of this concept of a service mesh, right? Uh, there are many definitions of service mesh. This is one. Uh, picture all of your workloads running on a platform, such as Kubernetes. The idea behind a service mesh is it is a common substrate, lives on top of your workloads, does not modify them, and through something like a set of proxies, allows you, the operator, to manage network interactions in a very consistent way. This is what a service mesh is. Istio is one implementation of this paradigm. There are multiple open source service mesh tools out there. Istio is one, was created a few years ago by Google and in partnership with companies such as IBM and Red Hat. It is fully open source. Um, but I think that this definition sort of undersells what Istio is, really. Um, I think what Istio actually is, is it's a platform. And you're like, oh my gosh, no, not another platform, right? Kubernetes is a platform. But I really do think that Istio is a platform, right? It lives on top of Kubernetes, exposes a set of APIs for you to do some very powerful things. Raise your hand if you've heard of Knative. Yeah, so Knative is this amazing open source serverless uh, platform that uses Istio, works on top of Istio, to do really cool stuff with um, simple serverless functions on Kubernetes. That's super cool. Just one example of how you can build on top of Istio. So I wanted to, to say that outright. How does it work? And I'm sorry if this is sort of review for you, uh, but the way Istio works is through a set of sidecar proxies. So this is the data plane. So in this example, we have one Kubernetes cluster, a set of pods. Those are the gray boxes. And inside each pod, we have two containers. So remember in Kubernetes that a pod can contain one or more containers. And the thing about a pod in Kubernetes is that they share the same Linux network interface. What this means is that containers in the same pod can talk to each other over localhost. So this is how the magic of Istio works. And what happens is you use Istio to inject proxies into your workloads, and then all subsequent traffic, inbound and outbound, goes through those proxies. And you're like, OK, so what? Like, proxies, great. Well, this is what Istio does. Istio configures these proxies using rules that you give it to do very customizable things with Envoy. And I want to go back to just mention that those pink hexagons, what exactly is that proxy? It is the Envoy proxy. So this is an open source layer 7 
high performance proxy written in C++. Istio is not the only service mesh tool that uses Envoy. You can use Envoy on your own. Some of you might even have written a control plane that configures Envoy proxies. Istio, that is the job of Istio. Um, one key thing to note here, right, is that Istio installs its API on Kubernetes as CRDs. CRD stands for Custom Resource Definition. So what this means is that you can interact with your Istio policies and your rules and all of that using kubectl, using Kubernetes native tooling. Um, and this becomes relevant when you're trying to do things like continuous deployment for Istio resources and you want a good way to do it. Put it all together, we have the full Istio architecture. Uh, at the top, we have the data plane. At the bottom, we have the control plane. Uh, the key thing to note here is that the Envoy sidecars can handle multiple different types of traffic. So remember, so this is layer seven. So we're talking HTTP, uh, gRPC, that layer, the application layer, that is to say. And it's all running in Kubernetes. Again, you can run workloads in VMs. Istio can handle it, but unfortunately, don't have the time today. I'm here today mostly to talk about configuring Pilot. Istio has multiple control plane components, so we have Galley for config ingestion, we have Citadel for cert management for MTLS, and we have Mixer for telemetry. Uh, these are all crucial components for Istio. Mainly, the way that you uh, configure traffic is indirectly through Pilot, and Pilot pushes your config, your traffic rules, down to the Envoy proxies in the form of filters. So you, the operator, are never interacting directly with these proxies. You talk to Istio, the control plane. And you might be kind of wondering, like, OK, like, so what? What's the actual added value of taking on a piece of complexity such as Istio? Right? It's not the world's most easy thing to just deploy it. It's, uh, what does it get you? A whole lot for traffic management. So one, just basic visibility into which microservice is calling which. You might have experienced this yourself if, you were, if you're trying to decouple a monolith into microservices. Introduces a whole bunch of problems. Um, such as all of a sudden you have your services making network calls to each other that maybe they weren't doing before. Traffic inspection, so taking individual requests and making decisions based on things like HTTP headers. I'll, I'm going to demo this in just a moment. Um, granular percentage-based routing. So the thing about a Kubernetes service, plain old service, is that you are limited by your workload scaling. And what I mean by this is say you have a Kubernetes service and behind that sits a bunch of pods and you want to do a canary deployment, and you have, let's say, one pod per deployment, the best you could do is 50-50. There would be no way in Kubernetes plane to just say, I want 1% of traffic to go to that new canary version so I could roll back really quickly if something goes wrong. So there's that. Automation. This is, I think, a really, really key thing. If you take away anything from this talk, and I, I hope it's this, because Istio exposes APIs that you can add YAMLs to and use all of the tooling that you would be using with plain old Kubernetes, you can do an essential automation that you could not do before. So I'm talking like turn on MTLS end-to-end -end encryption for your entire mesh with a single rule. That's pretty amazing, right? Um, and finally, decouple the network from your application code. What this means is that if you're moving to microservices, you might have multiple programming languages now. You might have a lot of services to deal with, a lot of teams owning these services. With Istio, you no longer have to have your developers think about things like firewall rules or um, retry logic. The idea of Istio is to take all of that network logic and to put it in the hands of the operators so that you can manage it in a unified way. And I know this is kind of a, a sort of a, maybe a mental shift from thinking about the way we do these things. Um, and it's incremental, and I'll mention that at the end as well. OK, that is how Istio works in a very small nutshell. What I'm going to do now is get into the fun part, the demos. Uh, traffic rules. So how do you tell Istio to do things with the sidecar proxies? This is the question, right? Um, Istio exposes a traffic API. Uh, it exposes multiple objects. Here are four. Today, we'll mainly just be talking about these. The first is a destination rule. What's a destination rule? It is a way to group a service into subsets, which is just a long version of saying you can take a Kubernetes service and partition it however you want. So in this example, I'm about to show 
uh, doing a partition based on versions, but you could have something like, here's my prod front end and here's my build front end. You could do that. And th this destination rule backs a virtual service. And this is really the key traffic rule API object in Istio that you should, that you should know. A virtual service is the way that you list rules. So in this example here, this YAML, I am going to uh, do a traffic splitting demo in which I canary, or blue-green is really the operative term, um, of a second version of my front-end microservice, and I'm going to direct 10% of traffic to it. Um, this is sort of the hello world of Istio, so I apologize if you've seen this a million times, um, but just to kind of get our feet wet here, it's going to be the first demo I show. Um, so yeah, so what's the value of, of doing this granular percentage-based routing that Istio lets you do? Uh, you, can, you can scale and you can uh, release new versions and roll back quickly, just through the magic of Kubernetes delete YAML. Um, so that's pretty, pretty neat. Today in the demos I'm, I'm going to be showing, I will be using the Hipster Shop demo app. You may have seen this before in some of the other Google demos. The only reason um, that we use this demo over um, others is that it, we, we try to more s sort of simulate something you might actually be running in production. So it's an e-commerce application with a front end and a series of back end microservices. So traffic splitting, let's get into the demo, shall we? Um, what I will be showing, again, 90% of traffic will be going to v1. 10% to v2. All right, so let's head over to our demo here. All right. Can everyone see this okay? Do I need to zoom in more? All right. So what, just to get a lay of the land here, what I'm showing on the right is just a set of repeated curl commands to a, a, a version endpoint of the front end. So I currently have one version of my front end deployed to my Kubernetes cluster. This is just plain old GKE um, with plain old Istio installed on it. And um, I am sending 100 requests to the front end service. So this is the Kubernetes DNS name, front end dot service cluster local. So what I'm going to show here is creating a destination rule that breaks the front end into two pieces, v1 and v2. And then I will be splitting the traffic, as I showed there on the slides. So um, what we'll see on the right here, hopefully, is I'm going to deploy the second version. And what we're going to see right away is that the default Kubernetes round robin load balancing takes effect. And what this means is just we're going to see 50-50 just random uh, selection between v1 and v2. And then I'll apply the rule, and we will watch 90% of traffic go to v2. So, All right, we deploy v2. If I do a kubectl get pods here, um, we can see that, <laughs> you saw the little 503 there, uh, that the second version of our front end is running. If I run this command again, we've got front end v2 running. And then we're going to apply the resources. So apply the destination rule and apply the traffic splitting rule. And what we'll see here in real time is that about 90% of traffic is headed to v1, and we're, we're doing a blue-green on v2. Again, you, you, in a real production use case, hopefully you're using something like a continuous uh, deployment tool to do this. Um, but just for demo purposes, basic traffic splitting with Istio. Let's do something a little bit more, uh, more interesting here. So if we go back to the slides. Perfect. Let's look at content-based routing. So I mentioned a few minutes ago that Istio can inspect requests and make decisions based on those requests. So what I'm going to be showing is that you can um, use Istio to have a rule that looks at the HTTP headers and routes to a backend based on the contents of that header. Um, why would you want to do this? There would be a potentially a lot of reasons, like traffic prioritization, um, doing, uh, building an A-B testing framework on top of Istio would be an example. Um, so what I'm going to show is um, that any request that has a foo bar one header, just for demo purposes, will go to front end v1. And all other requests will go to front end v2. All right, so if we go back to the uh, terminal here, I'm going to reuse the setup I already had from, from the blue-green demo. And here's the rule that uh, allows you to do that content-based routing. So again, we're looking at a virtual service, Istio CRD, 
And rather than doing just plain old splitting, we're going to do an, a match on the header with an, with an exact match foobar1, and we're going to route all requests that, that fit that match to v1. And then we will route all other requests to v2. Notice the kind of the precedence that is sort of implicit in this YAML. Um, you know, they say you shouldn't build logic into YAMLs. This virtual service does, in which we fall through. So if we don't, have, if we don't fit this match condition, we fall through to v2. So here on the right, when I apply this rule, and it's a plain curl request with no headers, what do you think will happen? Raise your hand if you think v1, it will be only v1, 100%. Raise your hand if it will be 100% v2. OK, great. Just making sure you're listening. All right, so we're going to apply this resource. We're in place, we're going to modify the virtual service we already had. Right, so 100% of requests go went to v2. Why? Because we don't have that HTTP request header. Here I am in a pod, and I can curl the front end with that foo bar one header, the version endpoint, and we will see v1. And just to show I'm not faking here, I can run this again and again and again, and we will see v1. Run it without the header, and we will see v2. So again, demo purposes. Show, showing as best as I can, it's kind of the, the things you can do uh, on top of Istio. So if we go back to the slides here. Uh, so for, for the, all the subsequent uh, demos in this section, I'm actually going to shift my focus from things like load balancing to building resilient microservices with Istio. So um, in the following demo, I will be showing something called circuit breaking. Raise your hand if you've heard of circuit breaking. Yeah, so this is a, a very common uh, sort of um, best practice for microservices and for distributed systems. Istio did not in invent this, um, in which uh, you wrap your services in a piece of logic, a circuit breaker, such that if you have multiple um, failing requests, you essentially you're, you're applying back pressure to avoid cascading failures, and it helps. Um, so what we're going to show is if we have multiple concurrent requests and, um, and more than one fail, we're going to flip the circuit breaker, or trip the circuit breaker, rather, um, so that we fail right away and we don't actually uh, make the full call to our front end. Um, and what this, yeah, so what this helps you do is if you wrap all of your services in this logic, um, you're building a more resilient mesh, and we all want that. So what this actual demo will show is I'm actually running a load generator pod in my cluster, and I will be sending multiple concurrent requests to the front end, and we're going to watch some of them fail after we apply the rule. So I know it's a kind of a, a demo, but uh, let's, uh, let's head back to the terminal here. So I've got multiple clusters running. I'm actually going to go to a new cluster for this demo. And let's see here. All right. I want to make sure I'm showing this rule as best as I can. OK. So the way you configure a circuit breaker in Istio is with a destination rule. And you're like, wait, we've been doing virtual services this whole time. What's a destination rule? It's a little bit strange. But basically, a destination rule applies to inbound traffic. So what we're doing is we're wrapping the front end service in a destination rule such that, and I want to make sure I'm, I'm showing this as best as I can, such that if we have more than one concurrent uh, connection, client connection to the front end, and more than one of them is in pending state, we're going to start kicking out subsequent client connections. Um, and these are, this is Envoy logic, so you can go ahead and read about the way Envoy implements outlier detection. Istio builds on that, um, doesn't really reinvent the wheel at all. Um, the key thing to note is that um, we are going to set that timeout period for three minutes. And I'm not going to show the full three minutes, but uh, yeah, so that's Circuit Breaker. So what I'm going to do here is run multiple concurrent requests into the front end. So in this example, I'm going to do 10 concurrent requests, 100 total requests, and we're going to watch all of these pass, hopefully, and get 200s. 
So we can see here that all of the requests to the front end pass, which is good. You want more than 10 clients to be able to talk to your web front end at once, ideally. Um, and we're going to apply the destination rule. And we're going to run that command again. And what, so what's happening is Envoy knows to kick a 503 error in the case that the circuit breaker is tripped. So what we're going to see here in the terminal on the right is a whole bunch of 503s, hopefully. Right, so parse non-OK code, 503, HTTP. So that came from Envoy. And you'll note, so with 10 concurrent requests, um, only 15% of them actually went through to the front end. Again, in, in production, you would build um, kind of a, a more robust system around testing this. This is just kind of, again, for demo purposes. OK, so that's Circuit Breaker. I've got one last demo in this traffic rules section. Thank you for bearing with me here. If we go back to the slides, the last demo in this section, I'm going to show fault injection. So um, raise your hand if you've heard of chaos testing in production. Yeah, right. So the premise here is that traditional unit integration smoke tests cannot predict every failure case in your microservices. You would ideally like a, a system or a framework that is kind of prodding at your mesh and trying to find weak areas so that you can build up that resilience, right? So the idea here is that Istio allows you to inject faults into one edge in your topology. And so what I mean by that is what we're going to do in this demo is inject a HTTP 400 bad request error in a specific connection between checkout and product catalog. Notice we are not touching the requests that are going from front end to product catalog. So that, this is another example of how Istio allows you to really granularly choose um, sort of what parts of traffic apply and what services. Again, yeah, controlled, controlled disruptions into the mesh. So let's, let's go ahead and demo that. If we go back to the terminal here, switch over to a new cluster. All right. OK, so the way that you do fault injection is with both a destination rule and a virtual service. Let's see here. All right. So let me show that. The destination rule, all it does, so again, so we're introducing a disruption between checkout and product catalog. So what we're going to do is um, define a subset for product catalog, v1, and the virtual service needs this um, to inject that fault. And so notice, like with the content-based routing demo, what we're doing is this match condition. But rather than matching on a header, we're matching on the source workload. So we're saying, OK, only requests from checkout should have this 400 uh, status code. Abort those requests, 100% of them. Everything else fall through to normal behavior. So that's what we hope to see. And the way I'm going to demo this, again, just for example purposes, is by going into the actual application, into the front end, and trying to do a checkout. And it hopefully will fail. So let's see here. Uh, all right. So we're going to go into our front end. Oops, that was not what we wanted. <laughs> so uh, let's see here. Here's our external IP. So here's the hipster shop front end. And what we're going to do is try to do a checkout. So notice how we injected the fault into product catalog, but we can still see the list of products. This is because, again, the connections between front end and product catalog are still OK. But if we try to do a checkout, place your order, we will see an error that says, internal, failed to prepare order, failed to get product. Um, it's a 500, but um, internally, it is a 400 uh, HTTP error. Uh, and uh, what we're going to do is, uh, if I delete these rules and I try to actually redo that checkout transaction, it'll work. So again, basic fault injection. You would usually apply these sorts of resources in the context of a larger, more controlled experiment. Um, in production, I would not advise testing the resiliency of your applications by applying these rules to your production cluster, um, maybe for obvious reasons. Uh, so <laughs> with that, we end the first section. Thanks for bearing with me. If we go back to the slides, perfect. All right. So. That was kind of a whirlwind tour of sort of east-west traffic routing. And the key here is to kind of give you a taste of how you can build on top of the Istio APIs to do cool things. Um, yeah, so in the 
last two sections, I'm going to cover ingress and egress. So uh, traffic in first. Raise your hand if you're running something like Nginx or a reverse proxy in front of your services. Yeah, right. So inbound and ingress traffic into Kubernetes or into uh, a data center is maybe nothing new to anyone in this room. The thing I would like you to take away from this slide is that Istio has a very deliberate model in which everything is an Envoy proxy. So what, the, what is the value out of that? It means you can configure east-west traffic in the same way you configure inbound and outbound and with the same YAMLs. And um, this becomes very powerful when you're talking about things like MTLS and, and traffic splitting. Um, and uh, yeah, so what I'm going to show here is how exactly that's working. The way that Istio ingress works by default is that there is a default ingress gateway, an Envoy proxy, that is running and is exposed internally through an external IP on a Kubernetes cluster so that you can configure it to punch a port in that ingress gateway to allow traffic in. And I've actually been doing this this the entire time. So I'm going to show how that's been working. Like, how am I accessing the, uh, this web front end in my browser? It's with this exact set of resources. My client, my laptop right here, is going through the ingress gateway, configured via a gateway YAML, going to an ingress virtual service, finally landing at the front end, back end. The front end, front end, back end. All right, so here's the gateway YAML that allows us to configure that ingress gateway, right? So we have um, a selector here that says, I'm talking about the default Istio ingress gateway. You can, you can deploy your own but I'm basically punching a port, port 80, in the default Istio ingress gateway um, and routing to uh, any host I configure it with. And in a lot of demos, you'll see this host wildcard star. Um, in production, you would be more specific about the front end. Um, so I'm just going to quickly show those YAMLs um, in my terminal. I'm not going to deploy anything new or special. Let's see here. All right, perfect. So um, let me show you the actual uh, ingress gateway pod that's running. So when you install Istio, so these are all the Istio control plane components that are running in my cluster. Um, and you'll notice this Istio ingress gateway pod, this one out of one. So this is a single Envoy container that is running that we will configure. And we configure it like this through this gateway resource. These are the same resources I just showed on the slides. And these are all applied to the cluster. I can do um, a kubectl get gateway. Here it is. I can do a kubectl get virtual service. I can actually show you that one. And we're saying um, for inbound hosts that have made it to the virtual service, route to the back end running on port 80, which is where the Kubernetes service is running. And what I can do from there is um, get the Istio Kubernetes services, get the external IP of the ingress gateway, and this is how we get to the front end. So in production, you would be, you would be mapping a, a, a well-known DNS name to this IP. And it's a stable IP that you can use to back, or to front, rather, multiple services. So if I go to this IP, I should be able to see the hipster shop front end. Um, so that's a really quick rundown of ingress. Um, there are ways to secure, sorry, we can go back to the slides, actually. Thank you. So there are ways to configure that ingress gateway to do things like enforce mutual TLS. Um, there is a wonderful demo out there th that shows um, securing the ingress gateway with Let's Encrypt or any sort of um, a cert issuer that of, of, your, of, your, of your choice. Um, and yeah, I don't have time today to, to showcase that. But um, yeah, I can, I can find a way to, uh, to link it, it. OK, so that's ingress traffic. Outbound traffic works in a similar way in Istio um, in that uh, you can choose to route outbound traffic through an Envoy proxy. It should be said that in Istio 1.1, which was released a couple weeks ago, um, the egress gateway, I believe, is now disabled by default. Um, not everyone wants all traffic to go through an Envoy proxy as it's leaving the mesh. There are very valid reasons why. But here's the basic model. So when you want traffic, so I guess I should preface with this. Has anyone ever installed Istio and all of a sudden had things like your MySQL connections just start to fail? 
Yeah, right. So by default, Istio locks down outbound traffic. This may change in the future, but right now, if you've encountered this problem, that is why. You need a, a YAML. You need a service entry that says, yes, it's OK for my traffic to go to MySQL, and this is where it is. Think of a service entry as a, a piece of inventory of a well-known host name that you are allowing outbound traffic to. And you add one of these for anything that needs your in-mesh services need to access outside. So this would be like an API, like the Google GCE uh, APIs. And when you add one of these resources, by default, it um, goes directly to that external service from the service, service's Envoy proxy. Uh, what I want to show as kind of my, my final demo here um, is a way to secure, do, do, this, do egress traffic more securely. So imagine that you have a situation in which you want to really carefully monitor any traffic that is leaving your environment. So say you're running Istio on-prem in a sp specific region, and you want to make sure that you can enforce or at least inspect outbound traffic. So what you can do is input an Envoy proxy in between your in-mesh service and your external service to do exactly that. So what I'm going to show in this demo is I'm going to co configure the egress gateway in Istio to, um, to look at all traffic to this uh, EU bank endpoint. Uh, why would you want to do this? There's a, another really good reason why, which is um, it started, uh, I think it's, it's an increasing best practice to think of in-mesh services the same way as you would out-of-mesh services. And what I mean by this is just because something is running in your cluster does not mean you can necessarily trust it, right? Kubernetes has service accounts in it. We have our backend. We have all of these systems in place. But that doesn't mean that um, a malicious service can't make its way into your cluster with, for example, a Docker image with it's kind of an erroneous tag. So um, that is a, why uh, I think this demo is, is somewhat relevant. So what I'm going to be showing here is that in our demo app, one of our backends talks to a bank API to get exchange rates. And we're going to put an egress gateway in between the currency service and the API to look at outbound traffic. Uh, I'm not going to show this in this demo, but what you could do with this gateway is configure it, just as we did all the way up until now, with rules, such as enforce MTLS um, uh, to the, the EU bank endpoint. So with that, I will do this final demo back in my terminal. Oops. All right. Perfect. Let's get on the right cluster here. Awesome. So let's look at the resources that allow us to do exactly this. So right now, um, right now, I, it, I just have my plain demo app deployed. No, no fancy rules. Um, no traffic is not going through an egress. And um, what I want to show, just to prove it's working, um, is to actually get the really spammy logs of this egress gateway. I'm actually, yeah, sure. I apologize if this hurts anyone's eyes. All right. So what we're going to hopefully see, and I was running this a little bit earlier, so sorry for the spoiler alert. Um, but we're going to watch requests go through the egress gateway via the logs once I enable these rules. What rules am I about to enable? These. So. The way that you would get this demo working is you would configure the egress gateway, which is already running, because I'm running a slightly dated version of Istio. You would configure this egress gateway to um, route traffic to the external endpoint. And then from there, you would add additional resources. The first would be um, ensure that traffic goes through this um, secure gateway um, by specifying route rules, just as we have been throughout this demo. And sorry that they're a little bit uh, dense here, so it's, I know, a lot to kind of grep visually. <laughs> and then um, we would define a destination rule that, um, again, is forcing traffic to go, instead of from currency service directly to the EU bank endpoint, we are f using route rules to funnel that traffic through the egress gateway. And so um, what we will hopefully see in the egress gateway logs is 
uh, we will see a warm-up log that says, okay, I'm the egress gateway, and I know that I, sh I can be t talking to the EU Bank API. And then we will see the actual request go through once I try to do a currency conversion. All right, so let's do apply the resources. We can see here in the egress gateway logs, it's kind of hard to see, but we have this warming cluster outbound, ECB, which is the European Central Bank, complete. So the Envoy has been configured with the rules it needs. And then um, if we go into the front end and we just try to like do a, do a refresh here, it's a, it's a bit slow. We may or may not have some throttling issues with this API as we demo it repeatedly. All right, and we try to do a currency conversion here. What we'll hopefully see when we go back to the logs is that um, a request went through the egress gateway. All right, sorry for all of those, uh, those, those telemetry errors, but yeah, so we see these, all these HTTP GET requests um, to that API. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's kind of securing egress traffic again. Um, with, with demos, it can be kind of tough to show um, exactly uh, how you would bring this into your own environments, but I hope it at least kind of gives you a taste. Um, so with that, I'm going to go back to the slides and wrap up. Thank you so much for bearing with me. I know it's like a lot of demos and a lot of YAML to stare at. All right, back to the slides. Closing thoughts. I want to stress that uh, Istio 1.1 was released a couple of weeks ago. Super exciting. It's, it was the result of a ton of hard work in the community, um, not just by Google, but by many other organizations and individuals to help improve Istio's performance and, and scalability. Um, so 1.0 was not too long ago, and now we're in 1.1. What this means is that Istio is still a relatively young technology. Some things are changing, um, and it is out in the open, right? It's open source. But um, what I want to, I guess, stress is that the, these APIs um, are the building blocks from which you build other things. So Istio might have internal control plane changes in the coming months, year. Um, the hope is that these API objects become the things that your organizations build on to do cool stuff. Um, so that's 1.1. What are some best practices for bringing Istio into production? This is just my two cents. Um, it would be to start somewhat slow, pick the one feature that you really want to bring to your environment or try out if you have kind of a sandbox cluster. So this could be something like a blue-green deployment. This could be enabling MTLS, which I didn't even cover in this talk. Um, and uh, learn the CRD, so like learn the virtual service for that feature, and it, it becomes easier after that to do other things. There is a somewhat steep learning curve um, that I know I encountered myself, so I would stress that. And from there, kind of gather the toolkit that helps you figure out when things go wrong. So there's awesome open source tools that do service graph. So Kiali is one example. Um, and uh, yeah, there's a command line tool called Istio CTL. If you've never encountered that, it's on the docs. It can do things like validate resources, check if MTLS is working, look at the proxy status via, via the Envoy APIs. It can do a ton of cool stuff. Um, and then, yeah, from there, work your way up. Um, it's definitely a journey, similar perhaps to adopting Kubernetes. Uh, I'm not trying to say that it's easy because it's a, it's a bit of a road. <laughs> and this talk did not even, I don't think, scratch the, really the surface of what Istio can do. Um, we, uh, API management is one example, and user authentication with JWT tokens, RBAC, um, unified policies across services, which services can access which. Um, doing custom telemetry forwarding to, to the sync of your choice, um, Prometheus, Grafana, hybrid environments, right? Mesh expansion to VMs, multiple Kubernetes clusters. I mean, Istio is, I think, a, a massive piece of technology that can do a whole bunch of really cool stuff. And if this is interesting for you, yeah, I would encourage you to check out the other talks that I'll be showing on the screen in a few moments. I wanted to give a quick call out to Anthos, which was announced yesterday, um, which is uh, Google's sort of uh, hybrid multi-cloud uh, offering. And I want to maybe clarify that uh, Istio plays a key role in Anthos. The way Istio plays a key role is via the APIs. So all the resources I've been showing throughout this talk, virtual service, gateway, destination rule, all of those can be used to configure your mesh in Anthos. The control plane 
in Anthos is Google Manage. So what I showed was using open source Istio Pilot to, to, to actually configure the Envoy proxies. Today we announced Traffic Director, which is the Google Managed Pilot, is a, a helpful way to think about it. But it, it works this kind of the same way as Pilot, in that it, it uses the Envoy XDS APIs to, uh, to configure the proxies. So uh, I hope that clarified the things if you're, if you're a, kind of a bit confused about how all the pieces fit together. Um, I want to also say that there, this is not the end. There are multiple other Istio talks this week at Next. A quick call out that I'm giving another talk tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. in the AMC Metreon debugging Istio, and it's almost entirely demos. So if this was not enough for you and you want a whole other hour of this in your week, you can join us tomorrow morning. One final call out that we here at, uh, here at Google, we are conducting some user studies for folks who are either not using Istio or are currently trying to use Istio. And if you would like to join these user studies and to provide feedback um, in any way, go to the form here. All right, so we are at nine minutes. I would love to answer some live questions in the remaining time. I do want to say that if I'm not able to answer your question right now, I'm happy to talk after. I will be around outside the room. Um, I'm not, I guess, an all-knowing Istio guru, although I really wish I was. Uh, so with that, anyone who wants to ask a question can just line up at those mics right down the middle, and I uh, will try to answer as best as I can. Thank you.